Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. We are back. And for this video, we're going to talk about feeder positioning and how to develop a new permission. And you'll remember from Squirrel Hill, this is where I started out my feeder, bros being in the direction of the arrow. And then after one session, I decided I was going to move my feeder to where that tent is there. And you see bro in the yellow a lot closer, which turned out to be a bit of a bad idea for bro, really. He was doing quite well till he moved in there. You can see my tent will go where the red circle is. And you can see the feeder, the bank on the tree to the right. So I'm shooting across the track. And we shot the rest of the season in those positions. And bro's numbers went down and I did rather well. So we decided that can't carry on. So we decided to have a bit of a move about. I've already been scouting for a new position of my feeder. So we take bros from that location and we move it along and we swap it for my feeder, which that was the original location, not just along from him. So we've put his feeder there and set up a bit of a makeshift water splash guard on the top. You can see that's what he's going to be looking at. And my feeder is now up the hill from the original position on that lone tree, up the bank, about 40, 50 yards. I found a nice big tree to sit it on. There's lots of plus points for this position. Quite well protected from wind. Directly behind it, there's a lot of pine forest, which we think they might be bed down in. And I've also looked at it from space, so I know I've got a big area of woodland to draw squirrels in. So I'm quietly confident in this new position. So spin forward in time now. Just after the pheasant season 2019. You can see the mess the pheasants have made picking up the loose grain. Bro's on his new feeder, so he'll be happy. I'm quietly confident he'll do well there. Because all the squirrels he would have had in his original position, hopefully they'll come along to this one. It is a pheasant shoot, we're not allowed to shoot these before anyone asks, do we shoot them? Certainly not. We don't want to, and more's the point is a pheasant shoot, we'd get thrown off pretty quickly. We're just going to shoot them with the camera, that's all. This is Bro's first squirrel of the morning, running down the bank, as they did so often for me last season. Obviously you wouldn't have seen this video in 2019 because I didn't make any. Well, very few in fact. I've not made any for over a year. I've been involved in a rather time-consuming house remodel which will continue on into the future. I do believe I've broke the back of it now. But there will be more decoration and other bits and pieces to be done. Plus if you've seen all over 200 videos we've made they start to look the same to me a bit, so I'm only going to make videos that I think have some merit and someone else to talk about. And so that's why this one's coming out, because we're moving the feeders around. The first effort wasn't quite brilliant. I moved mine along and discovered this was a really great spot to go. So now we've moved them again for the second time. And here we go. First one sat up on the feeder. Pretty much textbook. And bros lining it up on it. Take the shot. And he's off the mark on the new feeder. Standard back leg kicking. Look at the link in the description as to why they do that. Got to keep saying it because people keep asking. I don't really answer the YouTube comments that much anymore. I simply haven't got the time. I must confess, since I've been working on the house, I sort of got out of the habit of making videos. If you know me, you'll know I'm quite an obsessive person with things, and I was obsessing for a few years making videos. I really want to make the ones I want to make now, if that makes any sense. This one has got a few points in it. I've got some good footage in the can from 2019. We never ever stop shooting. Just stop making videos. There's a finite amount of time that I can lend to things. And some it has to give somewhere. And this is scroll number two. I could speed it up, but I'm just going to let you sit and watch it. So moving forward from now, 
I'll make them when I have the time, the interest, and I've got some good footage. There won't be any promises of certain days of the week like there was. How I kept that up so long, I'll never know. But I do worry about making the same video over and over again. Ultimately they are, because we're shooting the squirrels. And to my mind, once you've seen one of these videos, you've pretty much seen them all. When it comes to the shooting of the squirrels, the same methodology pretty much every time. I will probably focus more on Squirrel Hill, because he's got so many squirrels when I do make videos. We had some quite good days out, places absolutely heaving with them. Bro does well, I do well, and so does Brev. But you'll see that in coming videos when I get a chance to make them. Right, now I've explained what's gone on, why we're back, why I haven't made any videos. For the rest of the video, I'm going to shut up unless there's something interesting to say instead of waffling. The bro's patience, well rewarded as this one sits on the feeder. Nothing wrong with that. Exactly how we want it to be. You can see that bit of a dip has been created with the pheasants, I do believe, scratch in there. That needs filling in. Perfectly good brain shot there. Scroll two on the deck. This is sometimes annoying when they do that. Pick up the loose grain on the ground. You really want them sat on the feeder. The trouble is you get a few dead bodies and sometimes they get a bit nervy. The bro's pretty patient. We'll just have to wait and see what happens this one. That's often a good position when they sit on the top like that. Seems to be looking straight at Bro. He's lined up on it. He's a squirrel in the background. Just flitting across. It's one thing with the video, it shows you the things you missed. And that's not one of them. Very nearly a straight on headshot that. Textbook squirrel there. I do believe that's the other squirrel. Didn't go far. 
very often forage their way to the feeder. It's pretty much the right range, just got to sit up nicely. Nicely taken shot there, bro. Not sure he's filming there. There's the pheasants turns back up, might be the same one. Free food for all. Sometimes you get this happen. I've sped this up, it's five times speed. You can see that corpses have been picked up you definitely smell them in recent years we've tended to go and pick them up there's two squirrels in shot here usually leads to a squirrel sitting on the feeder a little bit quicker and that's bro's phone I'm texting him, that's his text call, believe it or not. It's a scroll call. So there's two potential scrolls. Come in and both disappear. Didn't present a shot. I'm not sure if that's the same squirrel. Have to wait and see. While this squirrel's been messing about, Bro's been tracking him the whole time. And he only needs him to sit still in a nice feeding position, like that, to take his shot. Didn't have to be on the feeder. They need to be sat comfortably feeding or on alert because they've seen something. Normally, you click your tongue, flick your fingers, what have you. Anything to freeze them. You can see where the pellet's gone in, right over the top of the eyebrow, straight into the brain. Good night, Vienna. Nicely taken, bro. Sometimes, when you've been waiting a while, you tend to mess about on your phone or faff around with your bag or get a cup of tea and, and a swirl will appear out of nowhere, as this one's done. Sometimes they'll run down the back of the tree, pop out. This location, most of the time, they come down the hill towards you, sometimes from behind the hide, but I'd say 85 to 90% come down that hill. Looking at the hide. 
or seems to be. But if Bro can actually see him on that log, she probably can because the camera's to the left of his hide, similar to mine, so he's right handed. The rifle will be to the right hand side. So it sits there nice and still. Could be in trouble. Well, the patience paid off. It's more like it. Through all that shot. Quick recock. Check it on the ground with a scope. Needed a second shot for some reason. Sometimes happens. With a headshot, they don't tend to run away normally. As long as you hit them anywhere near the brain. It's rolled down the bank by the look. Might have been precautionary, I don't know. I didn't see what happened. Definitely dead now. That's the final total for Bro. Seven squirrels. The Day State Harrier X in 2 2 calibre. Over to my feeder now. You can see, even though it's early in the year, how dark it is at the back because of the pine trees. The thick plantation of them down there. As yet, I've got no idea which way they come from. And that was just teleported in. I'm only really joking, I think it ran from the right from memory. It's fairly early on. I know there's been squirrels on it. See the level dip down. Some of them must be about. I'm using the firearms rated Theoban Rapid. 2 0 caliber. They've got 18 foot pounds. And a discovery scope on top of it. Very good scopes. Like them a lot. With all that headshot. Definitely dead. There's a spinal neurons firing. I'm on the scorecard already. Could be a good day. Happy with that shot. See how many more I can get. Like bro, I got the pheasants visit my feeder as well. Such a pretty bird, and so stupid at the same time. And again, I'm not going to even attempt to look at it with the rifle. I'm just going to film it. And after a while, it slopes off to the left, goes about its business. That's all I've got to keep me interested. Not seeing a lot of wildlife, and certainly not seeing many squirrels after the first attempt. He goes around the woods, and I catch sight of something playing on my phone. A young deer. I'm guessing it might be a fallow. I'm sure somebody will tell me different. Fallow or roe? Not sure. It's not my area of expertise. It's like a young male. No, something's going on. Can't quite work out what it is. It's always a thrill for me when I get creatures like this come close enough to film. Got quite a bit of footage of this one. I'm going to show you most of it. Used to death for ages. Absolutely no idea I'm there. Well, actually, I think he does think I'm there. Or something's going on. He hasn't quite got the wind in his favour. The feeder is only 15 yards away. This one might even be a bit closer. You should be able to see in a second just how close he actually is. I reckon about 20 yards away. The directional mic's picking up the sound quite well. 
You know something's going on. He keeps looking at the tent. Can't work it out. Watch his nose go in. Keeps getting little whiffs in me, I think. He eventually go far enough around so he can win me properly. Become very interested now, wasn't he? sort of ducking down and trying to film with my head ducked down near the site. Whether you can see the camera moving a fraction, I don't know. His nose will go in a minute. See the nostrils go in. You can smell something. He's not happy. There he goes. A little chuckle. Made my day. Seem to have picked the noisiest part of the wood. Very often I'll turn the camera on just to catch the bird song. A noisy old crow. I've spotted a squirrel here somewhere. No, it's going up the tree. It's not exactly what I want to happen. It's another reason I picked these trees. Those branches look quite good. I figured if ever I got a squirrel to go up the tree. I might sit on one of their branches so I could take a shot at it. A lot of dead branches low down. Means there'll be no leaf on there in the summer. I won't be able to see it easily. That's another plus point for that tree. And that squirrel just disappeared into the top of the trees, never to be seen again. That tree creeper come down. This one was taking the old grain, flying off and wedging it in the bark of a tree, believe it or not. See some over there. The movement's disappeared, it's on the brow of a hill. Drops away a bit. There we go. It's a squirrel to the left. And this is a bit of that behaviour I'm going to share with you. This tree goes nowhere. If you notice, we've pointed out in previous videos, we often put logs on the ground up to the feeder so the squirrels can get on there without having to go past the dead ones. And also on the way to the feeder, they'll run along branches quite often. A little bit of a vantage point. Plus they become highways and the smell of the squirrels gets on there. So you see this branch? Can't help itself. It's got to run along the branch. Well, that's the way it seems to me anyway. And this branch goes to nowhere if you see. I'm still confident it's going to go to the feeder. It's heading in the right direction. scratch for look of it. Quite flea ridden these squirrels. It's over to my left a bit so I'm not even trying to take the shot. It's another one gone up the tree. Went. Let me slur up a bit of tea. And completely disappeared. I've spotted another squirrel. Maybe it's the same one. Mr. Pheasant's appeared again. And it startled him. Bit of a disappointing day so far, apart from seeing the deer. Plenty of wildlife coming to the feeder. Oh, here we go. Another one on that branch. Could be the same one. Let's have a sniff. 
Let's get the smell of the last squirrel, I think. Definitely sniffing the branch, isn't he? Or she, I'm not sure what it is yet. There we go. Case in point. Where do you want to go now, squirrel? There's nothing on the end of that branch. So they have to go back. So they just can't help themselves. They run along the branch. Pheasant shaking out his credentials to would-be challengers. And the squirrel's got up in the sky. Where's it gone now? It's the same to the directional mic rubbing on the Velcro on the edge of the hide. Lost sight of it now. There it is. Come down the back of the tree, sat on the ground. Or the forest floor. There we go, up another branch. They really can't help doing it, can they? Come up with a little plot in my mind now to use my hatchet to doctor that piece of wood to make sure that it comes closer to the feeder so funnels them up onto it. better by the second this is. With that slight bank, the squirrels tend to hit the ground, kick and roll down into the lane, which brings them away from the feeder. I guess it could get frustrated but if you come and go I'm not that confident it's going to sit for me so when opportunity arises I'll take him out if I can there's a safety catch going off those little head movements they can often cause a miss or a wound it pays not to take a shot when they're doing it. That's why the feeding position is so good. And when they're on alert. So a good sniff at first squirrel. Took quite some time now, a few hours gone by. Between shots, if I can get him, it'll be a bonus. I was starting to think I was just going to get the one for the day. Another feeder I'm used to getting tens. Here we go. Opportunity not. The jazz be exact. Found the mark. So that slight slope there. When they do kick, they tend to come away from that feeder, as I said before. I do like a good slope. Second squirrel down. And as it happened, that was my last shot of the day. And there's the Theobin Rapid with the Discovery Scope on top. I was launching JSB Exacts. And there'll be future videos seeing how this feeder develops in this position because I'm fairly confident it's a good place to leave it. Just got to give it time to develop. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you.